Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the 17th Street Park and the Memorial Hall. It is my great pleasure to introduce uh, Jim Rossman. Uh, he is going to do the, um, the pledge. And then, of course, on deck, please, uh, Reverend James Pike. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. We ask for a blessing upon this place, O Lord. We give you thanks for what it was, for the people who were served here, for the joy that was had here, for the lives that were shaped and protected. And now we ask for a blessing upon what it is and will be, for the community that will gather here, for those who will enjoy this park space, and for the memorial hall where we remember those who have served, protected and defended, and even paid with their own lives. We ask you to bless the American Legion and the work they will do in this place and the community that will also gather in these spaces. And so we ask for your presence and your grace on this day in your name. Amen. Well, this is a very exciting day, and it's my great pleasure to um, thank all of you for being here today. And we are going to have the ribbon cutting of the 17th Street Park and the Memorial Hall. But before we get started, um, I would like to take a few minutes to um, acknowledge some very special guests that are here this morning with us on behalf of uh, different councils and committees and commissions. I believe a council member, former Mayor Kim Carr is here. Thank you, Kim Carr. And um, if there's another a council member here I don't know, please raise your hand because, um, OK, great. Uh, Community and Library Services Commission uh, present, we have Laura Costello and Elaine Parker and Reverend James Pike. Let's, yes. Oh, and Alan Ray. Okay, also please join me in welcoming key city staff and project team members joining us. Uh, that would be Community and Library Services Director Chris Slama, yeah. Amir Mof Movafi, President of the Legion Construction, Eric Borbali, Project Manager of Legion Construction, Danny Kay from Tonum, Alejandro Pina from Totem, and then uh, Andy Stein or Steen, RJM Design Group. Again, I would like to welcome you all to the 17th Street Park on this beautiful day as we celebrate the remarkable transformation from Rogers Senior Center site into Huntington Beach's 79th Public Park. Yes, go ahead and clap. This is an exciting day. The property we're standing on has served Huntington Beach residents in so many various ways over the 100 years, and I'd like to share a few of those highlights. In 1914, Huntington Beach Company gifted the property, then known as Block 417, I'll meet you down at the block, huh? That sounds pretty cool, <laughs> uh, to the city. This is one of those three public properties offered by the Huntington Beach Company. The parcel became popular community park space used for picnicking and baseball games and larger community events. While it was never formally named, it was often referred to the 17th Street Park. And in the 1931, the land was leased for oil drilling. 
and no drilling ever took place, the landscaping was removed and relocated to Lake Park right down the street. And then in 1941, the property was given to the military for use throughout the duration of the Second World War. In 1949, a U.S. Army building was moved here from Santa Ana to this property. The building has provided for tens of thousands of U.S. and Allied troops within the relocation of Huntington Beach. The building's use transitioned to a place where high school students used to uh, re use for recreation. Older adults were turned away from participating in recreation programming at the facility. It became known as the Recreation Center and was early home of Parks and Recreation Department. In 1975, the building was remodeled and transferred into the Senior Center. Following the second remodel uh, in 1983, it was dedicated as the Michael E. Rogers Senior Center, serving older adults till 2016 when the new Senior Center opened in Central Park. Shortly thereafter, sent, uh, City Council directed staff and Community Service Commission through many, many public input processes to determine the future use of the site. At this time, I'd like to invite our Director of Community and Library Services, Chris Slama, to come up and share a little bit more about how we ended up here today. Chris? Thank you, Mayor DeGlaze, and, and everybody that's here today. What a turnout. What an exciting special day it is. Um, I'd also, also like to recognize a few other special people that are here today. Um, we have a former mayor and council member, uh, Jill Hardy, is here with us today, too. Um, and also our city manager, Al Zelinka, is here. Thank you, Al, for being here today. And um, Kathy Shea, our chair of the Historic Resources Board. And Mr. Amory Hansen from the Historic Resources Board is here as well. So after the Rogers Senior Center closed, and really in the years leading up to that, we heard very clearly from this community that you wanted to return the site into its original use when it was first donated to the city over 100 years ago into a public park. After several meetings and discussions and, and many different interim uses of the former Rogers Senior Center building, city staff and RJM Design Group kicked off the design process by gathering feedback from our community. Back in 2019, over 100 residents attended a charrette workshop at the old Michael E. Rogers Senior Center site in a dingy room that was right about there previously. I see a lot of familiar faces here today um, that were with us. Participants sat around round tables uh, providing input on likes, dislikes, issues, concerns, um, and de desires for the park and facility amenities that, that you wanted to see here. I specifically remember being in that room and sensing a whole range of emotions. Um, everything from excitement, some frustration, some anxiety, and pretty sure I saw some eyes rolling at, at, at times. <laughs> but most importantly, there was meaningful conversation that initiated a solid start to community consensus. Multiple meetings followed, considering various iterations of a new plan. What we heard, ultimately, from the community and what City Council approved was this two-acre passive park and improvements to the former senior outreach building behind me for community use and dedicated space for the American Legion Post 133. Many thanks again to our Community and Library Services Commission and our City Council for your guidance and consideration along the way. And most importantly, I'd like to extend our sincere appreciation to the many neighbors and community mem members who participated so enthusiastically throughout the years, many of whom, again, are here today. I'd like to ask, if you were here at this initial workshop, or you participated in any meetings, um, any efforts that followed that led to having us here today, um, just please raise your hand. Raise your hand high. Thank you. Thank you all sincerely for your dedication, for your voice, your patience, and your contribution. Your involvement and passion will provide endless opportunities for neighbors, residents, and visitors alike to create memories, take a break from their stressful day, and enjoy Huntington Beach's 
one of Huntington Beach's greatest assets, our open space. So aside from designing the future of the park, there remain further challenges and opportunities, like naming these new amenities. To talk more about the naming and recognition journey, I'd like to welcome Community and Library Services Commission Vice Chair, Reverend James Pike, back to the microphone. Thank you. Not only do I pray, but I name things <clears throat> in the city. Well, I want to recognize the other people who are on this commission with me, uh, Laura Costello, who I know is here, and then also council member elect Pat Burns, who I don't know could make it this morning, but the three of us were on the park naming and memorials committee. And once it was decided to move forward, this was a multi-year project, as many of you will remember. Uh, it was important to bring together the community and figure out how we accomplished a few different things. One was the naming of this space. The other was, what do we do with the legacy of the McAlee Rogers Senior Center? And then also, how do we provide a space for the American Legion and honor another place that we had in this city uh, that used to be the old Memorial Hall? So if you remember, there was a Memorial Hall in the past. And so we wanted to thank everyone who participated in those conversations to help us figure out what to do with those three pieces. So we wanted to thank Kathy Shea, who was already acknowledged. Also, um, HBE Preserve Our Past and the folks who came from that. And we had a lot of community members that showed up uh, both in council chambers and downstairs just to offer their feedback, research, and opinion about how it was that we honored these various legacies. So when it went forward to the council, uh, I think everyone knows the way that this was decided, which I think was a nice way to accomplish all three goals. Uh, was the naming of this park into that sort of deep historic um, background, better than the lot number that Mayor Dalglais shared with us. Uh, taking the Michael E. Rogers legacy and creating a memorial wall at the new senior center. So if you're at the new senior center walking into the Parkview room, uh, soon you will be able to see that legacy of Michael E. Rogers and the continuation of caring for seniors in Huntington Beach. And then of course, as you see right behind us, beautifully displayed HB Memorial Hall giving a space for the American Legion, but also creating a community space where members who live in this neighborhood or beyond uh, can use this space to meet as community and belong to one another. So to give you some more detail about what happened here, the culmination of bringing community together and sharing ideas for this space, I wanted to bring our Deputy Director of Public Works, Chow Vu, forward to talk more about the construction period that took place over the last nine months. Chow Vu. All right, so in 2021, the city executed a contract with Legion contract contractors for the decommissioning of Rogers Senior Center, which includes building improvements to Memorial Hall and transferring the hardscape parking lot to the greenscape that you see here today. Prior to the commencement of construction, a groundbreaking ceremony was held in February, and the community had an opportunity to reflect and share the impacts of Rogers Senior Center. Shortly after that day, Legion Construction and Totem mobilized and began construction. The demolition of Senior Center began, and many of our neighbors were watching just beyond the construction fence. And 17th Street Park is a two-acre park, which includes open space and picnic benches, along with a new 13-stall parking lot. Memorial Hall received improvements, including flooring, millwork, interior, exterior improvements, paint, and upgrades to the restroom. This facility will truly serve the American Legion and our community as the original Memorial Hall did in the 1930s. I want to take a moment to take our, our talented construction team because believe it or not, this project is done ahead of schedule and under budget. So great job to our construction team. And um, I want to recognize Legion Construction President Amir Malagay Project Manager Eric Borley. From Totem, we have Danny Kay, Alejandro Pinnell. And finally, our city team, we have Brian Polifka, Dave Fate from Public Works, Kristen Martinez, Chris Cole, Ashley Wysocki, and Chris Slama from Community and Library Services. Oh. Mayor? As Mr. Slama indicated, you know, this is such a team effort, such a community effort. Um, however, there's many of you who been involved for quite some time. You live around here. You, you made your thoughts and uh, comments heard very quickly, very early. So I'd like to just give a, a shout out to a few others. Chris Varga and Fran Varga, read, hosted in countless strategic planning meetings. Bridget Johnson, uh, Catherine Johnson, high school student through her research presented the city historical documents. 
Barbara Haynes. I just saw you, Barbara Haynes. Longtime historic preservation contributor to the former HRB chair, whose research provided lots of documentation and significance that took place over the last hundred years. And I'm sorry, Michelle, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. So I'm just going to say Michelle M, if that's OK. You're an 18th Street resident. Uh, Mar Sinek, something, is that close? Is she here? OK, there you go. All right, very good. And Natalie Huang. And uh, lastly, I'm going to say Gloria Alvarez for the last hundred years. OK, so <laughs> um, let's see here. I want to bring on now the American Legion Post. Um, it has a long history and standing services to our veterans. I am honored to invite Russ Dorman to share a few words. Russ? Thank you, Barbara. You bet. Thank you. you bet. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hello, everybody. Welcome. This has been a long time coming. And just to let you know, we have been in this community as of December 18th, 103 years. So before I start with a little bit of history, this could not be possible without you, the community. Oh, oh no. <laughs> without you, the community standing with us, going to council meetings without Chris Slama under his direction as director of Parks and Rec, the city council we presented many, many, many times to them when Rogers was up here trying to save the building, but then the community won. We turned it into a nice park for everybody to enjoy. No more fences. It's open. Okay, now I'll get into some other stuff. In the early years of Post 133, we were heavily involved in the affairs of the city. The Post formed, funded, and manned the volunteer fire department during the 1920s. Many Legionnaires served in the police department, fire department, and school district, as well as on the city council. In 1926, a new city hall and auditorium was built. And if you're not familiar with it, I believe it's off Main and 5th and 6th Street where the old building used to be. A second floor was added, and the building was rededicated as, mem as Memorial Hall in 1930. Long time ago. Post 133 was given exclusive use of the second floor. The building remained the home of Post 133 until it was torn down in 1974. So here we are, 48 years later, and look, Memorial Hall is back. Thank you, community. Uh, today, the Post works with the city to plan its patriotic functions, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, and Patriotic Day ceremonies. Post 133 has a partnership with the city, Hometown Heroes, which displays banners of Huntington Beach military service members. You've seen them up and down Main Street. Post 133 also provides volunteers for the Veterans Resource Center at the Huntington Beach Central Library. Today, Post 133 gets a new home in the newly named Memorial Hall. Thank you for this home and your attendance here today. Thank you. Thank you, Russ. A uh, common th theme throughout our speakers has been community. Without community participation and input, this project never would have been possible. Whether you've been a resident for one day or 100 years, your participation and input assist in developing consensus for the future of our open spaces. I am very happy to welcome two longstanding community members whose families have been involved in Huntington Beach history for many, many years. Gloria Alvarez and Susan Worthy, please come forward. Hi, um, let me get my reading glasses. Um, for uh, those of you who don't know me, I am Gloria Alvarez, Susie Worthy nice here. And uh, we grew up here in Huntington Beach, and our dads grew up together here in Huntington Beach and played sports at Huntington Beach High School. So we go way back, way, way back. Um, so just FYI about me personally, uh, both my maternal and my paternal families uh, came here to beautiful Huntington Beach over 100 years ago, settled here in Huntington Beach 
I'm so happy that they settled here. They came here to farm the land. Um, I'm here today, actually, to speak on behalf of us kids who grew up here at the park at the time in the early 1950s, which was the rec center. Uh, and I want to talk about what this parkland has meant to us. Um, I personally grew up at the other end of Huntington Beach, much closer to where Bella Terra is today. So when we would come to downtown, what we considered downtown Huntington Beach, it was a big deal. It was like coming into town. It was very exciting. Um, yeah, for me as a young child, it was, it was a big deal. It was a big deal. So um, anyway, one of my earliest memories of this specific parkland was when I was about five years old, and we were dropping off my, my older brother for his baseball game here at the rec center. Does anyone here remember playing baseball here? At the, at the, when it was the rec center? I don't know if anyone's been here that, no, guess, okay. Um, anyway, um, I remember, here's the key thing, I remember this as being very high end. Um, it was really rather special because this baseball diamond had grass. And that was a big deal back then. Uh, remember, this was the 1950s. And at that time, there was very few open space uh, in the city that actually had grass. Um, open space for us kids in those days, it was either going down to the beach at the sand, um, or we'd play in the dirt fields that was either where the oil derricks were or a lot of eucalyptus trees with all the leaves falling. So, um, so I think the key message I want to make here is that even when I was a five-year-old child, I realized that, realized that grass Grassland, it was a real luxury. It was a real luxury back then, and we really appreciated it. So I just wanted to say um, I'll be 70 years old next. I'll be approaching my 70th birthday next year. And I'm so thrilled and I'm happy, so, so happy to be here today and to see that open green space with lots of grass has been returned to this parkland uh, for the future generations of children to play here. Thank you. That was great, Gloria. You're awesome. <laughs> um, this truly today, the way I look at this whole situation and what has transpired through the years, it, it's nothing short of a miracle. And I hope that all you residents and people that are out there today realize how precious this gift is to you today. Anyway, I'm going to just talk of just a few minutes, so just bear with me. Um, my name again is Susie Worthy. I'm uh, one of the daughters of the Norman Worthy family. I am here today to say a few words regarding some of the history of how wonderful this very land is being dedicated today back to its original 17th Street Park namesake. This park represents up to seven to 10 years of nearby residents and committed preservationists to preserve this open space for all to enjoy, which was not an easy accomplishment. In the 1950s, this park was the home away from home for all the kids in Huntington Beach. It was the one and only recreation center that existed. My father, Norm Worthy, became the director in 1954. With his creativity, his vision, and his leadership, he created a superb department of recreation that continues today in our beautiful city of Huntington Beach. How many people out here today even remember the old recreation center that existed on this property? We played everything here after school and in the summers. Board games, crafts, making kites on kite day, we even had archery. My dad had all of us kids out here with bows and arrows and a bullseye. I mean, we had so much fun here. It was just unbelievable. It was the place to come 
there was no other parks in the city that existed at that time except for Lake Park and Triangle Park down downtown and maybe Circle and Moon Park that it's known off of Main Street too as well. But as far as a place where you could go and play all of these games and do all of these activities, it, there was no other place. Anyway, it, it just was, you know, basketball, the softball field was over here, the uh, playground equipment was right here where I broke my arm, and uh, we had uh, the, uh, we had the, uh, uh, basketball courts over here and then of course the recreation center where you can play pool and carom board games ring toss everything anyway absolutely wonderful memories uh, of of the past if you were even part of it back then uh, the park division was added to my father's responsibilities and in the 1970s, a $6 million bond was placed on the ballot for the citizens to vote for or against to acquire open space land to develop the parks in the city. It passed with over two-thirds vote for approval. The citizens voted for the open space to be acquired to create all the parks that we have today in this city. He was responsible uh, with this money. My father, a gifted visionary, created 57 parks, including our beautiful Central Park off of Golden West Street in his lifetime. Norman Worthy is known as the father of our parks. He is honored with the park named after him just down the street on 17th Street and Main Street and a bench marker located in Central Park if you can find it there. I can tell you most assuredly today he would be extremely pleased that another open space has been preserved for future generations Today is a beautiful day, and it's just remarkable. And the only thing that would have made it even more perfect would have been if my mother would have been singing at this park dedication today, Shirley Worthy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gloria, and thank you, Susan. And to all of the folks and representatives who spoke here today, we're really grateful. And now I'd like to invite up um, City Council Member uh, Kim Carr and former Mayor Jill Hardy, if you'd like to say anything. Is there anyone else that maybe came while we were speaking? I'm happy to call you up. Come on. Thank you. It's so amazing to actually be here and see this come to fruition. I was telling Barbara, I feel like this is almost like having a baby and I've been in labor for like 30 plus hours and it's just never going to come out. But anyway, um, I am so excited about today because um, we have had a lot of meetings about this and we've had multiple discussions about this and there were times when I was thinking this is going to go sideways at some point, but I'm so grateful for everybody coming together to build this beautiful facility, which will be here for generations to come. And so I, it's a true honor for me to have seen this project come to fruition and to be a part of it. And um, couldn't have done it without my trusty colleague, former Mayor Jill Hardy. I just want to point out that this is a monument to community involvement, that the neighbors and other residents throughout the city, um, the American Legion, they were so involved in what became of this property, not just returning it to a park, but what kind of park it would be and how the space would be shared with the community. And so each time you come by, remember that the members of the community, their voices make a difference. So stand up, speak up, and always participate. Thank you so much. And if you won't mind, I will take a, a moment of, of sharing just maybe a few things about myself. I, um, this is kind of a bittersweet day. This is really one of my last uh, 
services as mayor. I've had the good fortune to be your mayor for a second time in the last eight years. It's been an honor and a privilege. And I was talking to someone earlier when I got here, and um, when I moved to Huntington Beach, I lived like two blocks over here, 15th and Pecan. And, you know, I didn't really have the sense of the historic knowing at that time what this was. And so what I mean by being a park and all of that, I just know that I brought my daughter here and we played here in the park. And um, those were really exciting times in a way. Um, I've got to tell you very honestly, we came here with not a lot of money, um, a lot of hopes, absolutely loved the beach. I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. I could carry her, literally carry her, and walk to the beach. So those were kind of things were pretty special. Anyway, as life would have it, um, I grew up, got a job, you know, all that good stuff. So I've been here now 50 years, and um, I will be eternally grateful for this experience. So many of you in the grassy area right now, I've known for a long time. Some of you just met you today. But just let me say to you that, like you, I love Huntington Beach, and I have for a very long time, even before I got here. <laughs> Uh, one of the first things I did when I moved here, if you can believe that, but I had a girlfriend that um, used to surf, and I got here to Huntington Beach, and I took a big handful of sand right by the pier and put it in a, a Ziploc bag and sent it back to her in New York. Um, it just, you know, it's just one of those things, how special our community is. So I want to personally say thank you to all of you here who are present and the ones that are not. It's been a ride of a lifetime, and I'm extremely grateful. So thank you.